Vanessa the Crafty Gemini and I'm back video number five in my Butterick 6214 video sew along series believe it or not we are finally finally to the point of moving on with the project of course this is going to take time it takes a lot of trial and error practice and to be honest a little bit of experimentation with the combination of pattern design and the fabric choices that you make so let's jump right in I hope you enjoyed this video and we're this much closer to finishing our top. So our rayon chalet fabric here, quite drapey. When fabric comes off the bolts, especially if you're a quilter, you'll see that it comes with the fabric pretty side facing up. In garment sewing, you want to refold it so that the pretty side of the fabric that you're going to see when you're wearing the top is actually on the inside. So I'm folding it back in half, selvage to selvage, and selvage is this kind of manufactured edge that you see on all your fabrics. So I'm folding it along the width of the fabric, and the width of the fabric, we say from selvage to selvage. So this full width, which I said for this fabric is about 57 or 58 inches. And then because this is so drapey, you don't really wanna force it to match the selvage because not all fabrics are really printed on grain like that perfectly. So instead, I just grab it on a fold and let it drape and fall where the fabric wants to. This is going to take some work, especially if you're a beginner and you're not used to working with fluid kinds of fabrics, but let's give it a go. So typically, you're going to fold it this way. If you know on the pattern pieces, we only have half of the front and half of the back. That's because these pattern template pieces need to be placed and cut on the fold. And if you notice at the center front, and the straight line that's the center back, you'll have a, a little note here on the pattern that says center front on fold. This edge and this edge need to be placed on folds so that when you cut with the fabric folded, you'll get a symmetrical pattern piece to this one so that the front of your top is exactly for the neckline. This curve is gonna then be mirror imaged on the other side, right? The same thing for the armholes, and that's why we cut it on the fold. And so for that reason, most of the time that you're cutting out garment fabrics, you're going to be cutting it with the pretty side inside the fold. Now to conserve fabric, I'm just going to fold this up. And I'm really light on my fingers with the airy fabrics and the breezy kind of drapey fabrics because I don't want to have any puckers or pleats or anything. Now, if you look, especially on a rayon fabric, rayon chalet like this, because it's a woven, you'll see really closely the threads going up and down and across. And you can try and line those up as best you can with the grain line. But for a beginner, just try to do your best. Again, like I said earlier, just I want you to make something. So my fold is down here. So I need to look on my center front. This is my front pattern piece, number two. The line that says center front on fold needs to be placed on this fold line. And if I place it there, I can see that I still have some fabric here. So I can stand to be a little bit more efficient with my fabric and scoot the fold down. And I'm just trying to conserve fabric. Not everybody does this, but you definitely do not want to just like fold your fabric right down the middle and cut your pattern piece off because what you're going to find is you may end up not having enough fabric even though you had enough to begin with. So you still want to make smart cuts into your fabric so you don't waste money, of course, and time. So I have it on the fold here, and I've scooted it all the way up to where the edge of my fabric is so I can use up the most fabric there as well. I could stand to come in a little bit tighter on this, but eh, half an inch, that's okay. I put some weights, and these are just washers that I get from a hardware store. They're nice and heavy, and they do the job perfectly. Okay, you can use shears. I, of course, I'm going to use a rotary cutter since I'm a quilter and that's what I prefer to use so I can fly right by. And as I come along to the different notches, I'll give you a quick little reference and tell you what you should do when you get to them. I like to use my smaller 28 millimeter rotary cutter when I'm coming around curves. Just the smaller blades tends to go around curves a little bit easier. Then on the straight sides, I can get through it quicker with the 45 millimeter one. So now, I've cut straight across the top of the shoulder seam, but I can see that there's a notch there. When you first start off with, and it's how I also learned, you stop when you get to here and you cut the fabric out 
into the fabric that I actually just cut away and then you continue. That takes a little bit too long so what I prefer to do is actually cut into the fabric right there. Now on commercial sewing patterns your seam allowance is going to be 5 eighths of an inch. So I cut across the top edge here but you'll see that for my medium size which is the solid line I cut at there's a notch. Now when you first start off usually they'll have you cut into the fabric that I actually just cut away from so you have to stop with shears and cut out and then cut in and then continue. I don't have time for that so what I prefer to do is actually cut the full line and then come in with little snips and cut right down the center of the notch only as far as the notch goes and I cut into the fabric like that. It's still going to be used as a reference point. I can kind of spread my fabric out and see where that notch is. Just make sure that you cut through both layers, which I can see I didn't get my scissors under the second layer there, and just cut there. If you're afraid of having a little slit in your fabric, don't worry because the seam allowance on these commercial patterns is 5 eighths of an inch. So this is still going to be in the seam allowance. My seam allowance is going to come all the way to here. So you'll be fine. You're not going to have a hole in your top or anything like that. Just cut into it as far as the notch goes. All right, and then we'll come back. I have a curve, so I'll use the smaller rotary cutter and just follow around the edge. And I can see that I just passed another notch right there. And so after I finish this curve, I will come back and cut that little notch. Make sure I grab, grab both layers, yep. And then as I continue down the side, I can see there's a double notch one here. And I went through both fabric layers and then continue to do that all the way around. I always like to double check the notches, make sure I cut all of them. There's one there, there, there. All right. And I like to leave the pattern piece on it, so I just fold it up with it, and that way I don't start getting all my pieces confused. I know this is my front. So I'll cut this off. And now you can see that off the same piece, I can now scoot down and refold here to cut out the next piece. So I haven't even used up a yard of fabric yet, and I'm already going to be able to cut the front and the back. And don't let your fabric drag you down. So you can bundle it up on the table. You want everything to be smooth, no puckers. And make sure that it's not off grain. Do your best to kind of let it hang. That looks pretty good to me. Now we have the back piece again locate the center back on fold and then that edge needs to be placed on that fold. Again, I'm going to scoot all the way down so I don't waste fabric and see how far over I can go and I'll actually come back down because I don't need to have this folded quite as high. off with two yards of fabric which we thought was an okay amount to start off with I've already cut out the front and the back and look how much fabric I have left so again two yards is going to be good especially if you're going with a, a shorter length of a top and you're using my tips to cut a little bit more conservatively from your fabric so you get some more efficient cuts now all we have left to cut out here since we're using the store-bought bias binding is to cut out two sleeve pieces so now for cutting the sleeve pieces, I have it folded, not because I'm going to line up anything on the fold, but because I'm going to cut all the way around this piece and end up with two sleeves, which is what I need. All right, you need to cut two, and it'll say it on the pattern piece right there, it says cut two. So I'm doing this so I can cut symmetrical pieces that are mirror image, and this is how you want to line it up. Now the line that's running right here is the grain line, and it needs to be running horizontally across if you have your fabric folded as I do. So the grain line runs perpendicular to the crosswise grain, which is where the selvage is. Basically what that means is that on this little piece of fabric that I have left over here, you can't just put the sleeve and cut one out of it this way. Because if I do that, the grain line is running along, right, parallel to the crosswise grain, and that's not what you want. So this is not going to be enough, even though the cheapo in me wants to definitely cut it out of there. Don't do it, because it won't turn out how you want. 
So I've folded it enough to get two layers, one and two, so that now I do and I can line up the cross or the grain line the way that it's supposed to. So it should be running this way. And the idea is that this line, you want to try and match it up with one of the horizontal threads that's running along here of your fabric. You don't want to have the line at an angle this way or that way. It won't be cut on grain. And when you hear people say that, that's what that is. So I first eyeball it just to kind of see if it's nice and straight in line. And it looks like it is there. It's such a small piece, it's pretty easy. But what I'll do is I'll come to the beginning of the line and measure to the fold of my fabric. And this is, let me see, 10 and 5 eighths. Now I'll come to the other end of the line and measure again, and it's at 10 and 5 eighths. So I know that this line here is the same distance away from the fold that this is. And that tells me that it's running right along the grain line. So like you saw, I just eyeballed it and it worked. But you can always double check, especially on the larger pieces, it's harder. Like when you're making pants and you have a long pant leg, you need to measure that grain line at multiple points to the fold to make sure that it's exactly cut on grain. Otherwise, you will not be happy with those pants. All right, so now I'm just gonna cut around just like we've done to the other pattern pieces. And then do your notches, don't forget. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video tutorial. If you did, hit it with the thumbs up below, share it across the different social media sites with any of your crafty friends, and don't forget to click the subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of my future videos. Thanks again for watching, and I will see you in the next video.